News Digest, 2nd of August, 3308. We read the news so you don't have to. In this week's news, the permit lock spreads to a second planet. Commander Zulu Romeo has a peace plan. We look at how to install mugging software in your cockpit. And we demonstrate just how easy it is to complete a buckyball race. The Pilots' Federation, which in July last year attempted to dissuade Commander from assisting Salvation in his attempts to undermine Aegis, has extended its newfound cooperation with the rebel scientist by permit-locking a second planet in the HIP-22460 system. It's widely believed that Salvation, acting for Azimuth Biotech, requested the permit-locks to prevent Commander from seeing the reality of the Proteus Wave weapon before it's ready to fire. The Pilots' Federation, which now seems to be working with its former enemy, applied the permit lock to HIP-22460 Planet 10B, which is where the Proteus Wave has been assembled, several weeks ago. It applied the second permit lock to closely adjacent Planet 10C, after an enterprising commander managed to fly an SRV between the planets and thus evade the permit lock. An Apex taxi was dispatched to remove the unwanted commander. The Pilots' Federation has denied that it's working closely with Salvation, insisting instead that it is acting exclusively in the interests of its members. Azimuth Biotech claims to be interfacing the Guardian-powered Proteus Wave with one of the Thargoid structures on Planet 10b, something that's known to be highly dangerous. In related news, Commander Zulu Romeo has appealed for commanders to work for peace by presenting Salvation with a peace offering in the form of both Guardian and Thargoid technology to be delivered to Azimuth Biotech's four megaships, the Glorious Prospect and Masashi in Pleiades Sector CW-U, B3-2 and the Bright Sentinel and Heart of Taurus in HIP-22460. The items with their symbolism, are as follows. Thargoid items. Sensor, representing the ears of the universe. Probe, the insatiable curiosity of sentient life. Link, the ties that bind us all and link each other. Resin, the glue that keeps us secure together. Technology sample. The technology to reach the stars. Biological matter. Living beings in all forms. Guardian artifacts. Orb. Representing our view of the universe. Casket. Our material possessions and wealth. Tablet. The knowledge we gain and pass on. Totem, our belief in things greater than ourselves. Urn, a reminder of the past and of family and loved ones. Relic, purest energy, the spark of life. Finally, Commander Zulu Romeo asks that we take to salvation an offering of classified experimental equipment representing the will of humanity itself and a means to mediate and moderate over the conflicting factions. Commander Zulu Romeo hopes that by having a mixture of Guardian and Thargoid technologies on board the Azimuth megaships when the Proteus wave is fired, creating massive resonances that are magnified by the presence of all that technology, that Azimuth Biotech and Everyone on board the four megaships will be fast-tracked to their final salvation, thus bringing peace to the galaxy. Meanwhile, Operation Witch Hunt is on the point of forcing Azimuth Biotech out of the Maya system, leaving Salvation's faction with a presence only in Mbuni and Titori. Operation Breakwater has declared success in the first part of its initiative to gather equipment to jam the Proteus wave signal to reduce the potential harm it may do. 
On the pro-salvation side of things, the combat against Thargoids in HIP 22460 has been extremely well supported. The initiative to help rebuild Salvation's laboratories to help him take advantage of captured Thargoid technology is doing rather less well, although it's met its minimum success criterion. Salvation will be able to do his analysing. There's no definite word on when the Proteus wave will be fired. But with another combat initiative planned to start on Thursday, the following Thursday, the 11th of August, seems the most likely date for the biggest firework display in the galaxy. The Very Hot, Very Messy Initiative To deliver a Hutton mug and a bottle of Megagen to every single station in the galaxy is a huge undertaking. Bruce Steak Garrido is expected to launch the event at 19.30 galactic time on Thursday the 4th of August and progress will be tracked using something called the Hutton Helper. To get the Hutton Helper working you need to install EDMC and link it to your commander account. You then need to download the zip for the Hutton Helper, unzip it into a suitable named folder and then Open EDMC, select File, Settings, and then click on the Plugins tab. You then need to click on Open on the right and drag the Hutton Helper folder into the Plugins folder. Go back to the Hutton website and create an account. You'll be emailed instructions to type something into your comms window in the cockpit, which links your Hutton account to you as a commander. And now finally, with EDMC running, And, with the Hutton Helper plug-in running, you'll be able to fly to Hutton Orbital, buy your mugs and gin, plan where you're flying to, sell the commodities into markets and see your contribution to the initiative update in real time. Or at least you will be able to after 19.30 on Thursday, when the site goes live. This may sound complicated, but remember, it is rocket science. The latest buckyball time trial in the Magic 8-Ball Championship, just finished, is Falling With Style, Flat as a Pancake Remix, curated by Osric the Wise. Also known as Chicken Run Crash Harder, the idea was to buy a crystalline sphere, take it to a few surface bases, and then take it back to the start. It doesn't sound hard, does it? The planets you land on have gravity. This should not come as a surprise. As a champion buckyballer, Commander Wotherspoon thought he'd give it a go and demonstrate a few tips, but only after the race was over, to avoid helping the competition. Lots of people tell you that you need to keep the approach timer on six seconds. That's not actually true. If you can manage the approach so your speed drops just within the blue line as you enter the drop zone, with one second showing on the approach timer, you can save valuable seconds. It's very important not to overshoot, though, as you may not drop out at an optimal distance from the starport. That's Snow Moon over there. It looks very pretty from this distance, doesn't it? We need just one ball. The other one's in the Albert Hall. Now we need to fly around to each of the bases, land, take off, rinse, repeat, until we get back to where we started. It's very important not to drop the ball. It's easy to make the mistake of taking the regulation build loadout specification too literally. If your approach is to strip out all the modules and then only fit the modules specified by the so-called buckyball experts, you may overlook the need to have a planetary approach suite fitted before you try to land at a planetary base. Thankfully, there's outfitting available just 1,000 light seconds away. It's only a short detour. You can make up time by supercharging your frameshift drive at a white dwarf. It's very useful, risking your ship's integrity for that last seven and a half light year jump. Landing on the high gravity planets is very easy, really. You just need to level out at the end of the glide, request your landing permission, and maintain an even keel at all times, making sure not to use either your up or down thrusters at all. You can angle very gently down, slide down the invisible slope to your landing pad. 
Scraping down the side of a skyscraper is optional but extremely stylish. And the flip upside down when you hit the ground is a way of showing just how in control of the situation you are. And there we are, crossing the finish line in record time. That run was almost flawless. It's sure to earn a podium position. And that's this week's Galnet News. Galnet News. We install the plugins, but that doesn't mean you don't have to. <laughs>